Hi there, I'm Robert Hooker. I'm the blogger behind Share the Point, where I talk about SharePoint in the context of larger collaboration and Web 2.0 environment. Today I'm talking again for Total Social Media. Today I'm actually going to talk about the real business benefits, return on investment that you're going to get out of the new JavaScript AJAX enabled UI in SharePoint 2010. Now, as I spoke about earlier, the new SharePoint UI embraces JavaScript and AJAX. What that means is that JavaScript can actually go and send information back to the server and get information from the server from multiple different sources and assemble it on your page in real time. So while the user still has the same page open, Values can be changing, you can get inline editing, you can get quantities changing. Uh, an example that uh, David Shiner brings up is about flight information where you select a certain airline and you start, start typing the first few letters of an airport and it finishes the airport for you and then it can also then dynamically create drop down menus for regions based on the information you get. Now. I've been developing in the web for about 15 years now. And one of the things every time a new technology like this comes out, one of the first things is that the business people always think is, isn't this just some toy for geeks? I remember when Flash first came out, a lot of the business people looked at it and they were like, well, what does this do? What is the benefit? Why don't we just give them text? Why don't we just give them interaction?" Okay, and I'm definitely no, I'm hearing, even hearing this now with Ajax, people, the business are like, well, look, you know, we've got forms, people can submit the forms, the operations can be run on a server level, and a new page can be written. Why do we need this new, harder to program Ajax interface in which information is being drawn from the user and sent to the back server and calculated and brought up to the front? And once again, it's a very good question. And the fact of the matter is, all of the developers out there should be asking that question every single time they're thinking about building a complex AJAX interface. Is it really necessary? Can you use the old web forms to do it? I mean, certain information can be managed by the old web forms. For example, if you're going to be taking some holiday leave where you're just going to fill out a calendar, press submit, and then it's going to come back to you and say, it has been applied, you'll hear within uh, 48 hours if there's any issue about it. Well, there doesn't seem to be any reason to comp code a complex AJAX interface. You could just have a form with post back. The thing to do is to look for business interactions where doing a post back to the server is so time consuming that it actually makes it difficult for the user. For example, if I'm trying to edit a number of items, say 50, I have a list of 50 items, and I'm trying to edit one um, set one at a time of each one of them, okay? But the, the edits I do later depend on the edits I do first. So I might end up having to make 30 or 40 edits to this page but I'm going to have to see how these edits happen. So it's something like an Excel document list. I'm not going to want to make a change, hit post, have the page submit, have the screen go white, wait for the new page to draw up, find where I was again, and do it again and again and again and again. What I want to do in that situation is I want to work on a page which updates while I'm working on it. So what you certainly want to do for business is you want to look at situations where you have people working where you want very quick interactions between SharePoint or line of, uh, line of businesses or other web services and the user. You want those interactions to be happening very, very quickly. For example, if I'm taking um, a process call and I'm in a global organization, I may enter the nation that the person's from and the screen may change immediately to uh, slightly when I get the country and then I may put the region and the screen may change. And while I'm collecting information, there may be a lots of different paths so that I can go down. Okay, I don't want to have to press something, 
hit press and wait for the server to respond. Then select the next one, hit submit, then wait for the server to respond. This should be very slow, particularly if I'm doing this on the phone in real time. So many of your customers are calling your customer service and they're sitting there listening to your staff typing and waiting for them to have their systems return. An AJAX system, if you have very complex interactions, are going to allow your person to take certain steps and for the page to be redrawn and redesigned without having to resubmit and for information to go back and forth from the back-end server applications to the web server in real time. So, you know, these are complicated systems to write. What you're going to want to do is you are going to want to stop to think every time that you're going to be doing an AJAX application, whether you really need to create a complex AJAX application. You might want to stop to think, does the old web form system work? Is this a one-off? Is this a one-time submit, for example, if you're collecting email registration data from people, you might just say, you know, fill this out, submit it, we'll send you an email response within 10 hours. No reason to make that AJAX. But it's, if it's another system where, depending on, on the choices you make, the screen is going to change, and then change again, and then change again, and then change again. If you're going to have large list of items, and you're going to want to be able to edit them in line, which means you're going to be able to make changes without having to leave the page. And also, if you're going to want animations, if you're going to be able to move things, drag things around the page, if you're going to be able to create complex graphics, if you have rich business requirements that involve your system to be very responsive, very agile, and very graphically interactive, then you're going to want to do Ajax. But I would definitely say to you guys out there who are deploying SharePoint 2010, don't burn your Ajax bridge on something that you didn't know you need Ajax for. Don't go start implementing Ajax solutions like Ajax modal dialogues or Ajax post, you know, to get rid of post books, just to show off that you've got this new feature. Make sure that, you know, things that can use the old technology, web parts that use basic forms, that post back to the servers, if that's good enough to work, or if you have an existing system that's using the post back technology and then goes to the server and it works fine enough, don't waste time and effort to create an AJAX solution for a problem that doesn't have an AJAX problem. Make sure you start thinking, um, now that you're in SharePoint 2010, which business requirements, which problems are best met with Ajax, what are the strengths of Ajax, what are the problems it can solve, and what problems are best kept with older technological solutions like web ASP web forms. Once again, I'm Robert Hooker. I'm speaking here for Total Social Media, and thank you very much, and good luck, and have fun with SharePoint 2010.